Today we're going to be doing Past Lives. Past Lives came out last year, 2023. And uh, yeah, no, it got uh, a good reception uh, from critics and audiences alike. Um, Past Lives is directed by Celine Song, um, a Korean and Canadian director, play, playwright and screenwriter based in the United States. Um, she was also nominated for several accolades, including Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay, screenplay for Past Lives. Um, and it stars uh, Greta Lee. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Greta Lee, but the first time I saw Greta Lee, she was, I saw her in New Girl. You know New Girl, the sitcom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she was, she was, yeah. she was there. I was like, yeah, who's this pretty woman? Yeah. And uh, then she was also in Russian Doll. She was the main character's best friend. I don't know if you saw that one. No, I didn't see Russian Doll, unfortunately. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite cool, actually. Well, um, I haven't seen. Pardon? So, a lot of her stuff is stuff I haven't seen like this. Is it? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, she's been in top five. Mm -hmm. um, top five by Chris Rock. We haven't seen that one. She was also in The Cobbler with Adam Sandler. Oh, I don't remember. I don't she think I watched also, no. She was also in Ma um, Money Monster. The way we touched on Money Monster before. Um, and then in terms of like, uh, what's this series? She was in Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the problem with s police procedurals now yeah. is is highly unlikely for you to remember a character that only appears in one episode if like the series has like 23 seasons. True, true, true. <laughs> you know awesome. what I mean? Yeah, one hundred percent. And also, you have to almost have to be famous already first. Like the yes, Robin, Robin Williams episode was great. Um, right. He's, yeah, he was in Special Victims Unit. Um, the guy from Harold and Kuma kind of showed up in one of those episodes. Oh, Carl Penn. Yes, the the Indian guy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he was great. It's kind of funny though. There's a funny joke about that where like um, you get like five random actors, right? And you're like, I wonder who the suspect is. It's Random guy, random guy, Henry Cavill, random guy. Random <laughs> I wonder who it could be. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course it's going to be Henry Cavill. Why would they show Henry Cavill? Yeah, why would you show him? For a second. It makes sense. <laughs> Unless like, if it's those directors that deliberately, like, like a Ryan Johnson, who deliberately wants to subvert the expectations where he would show Henry Cavill, but it was genuinely just a cameo. <laughs> like, that'll be a movie, though. Like, for example, Eurotrip has Matt Damon, of course. You know, yes. no surprise Matt Damon. Know. Yes. And he does know. <laughs> and the classic bait and switch that um, they did for Scream. I don't know if you know about that one. Because uh, Drew no. Back Barrymore was Scream One. Drew Barrymore was like one of the biggest names in film at that time, right? Yes. So uh, they the, also put the, her in the, the trailer. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. So they put her in the trailer, thinking, "Oh my God, this is going to be like you know, Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore yeah. starring this," and then she's the first person to die, and it's like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That, you do get stuff like that. Definitely. I mean, you you just reminded me of uh, what James Gunn did, did with the Suicide Squad. Mm. Um, Nathan Fillion. Dude, you got Nathan Fillion. You got. Uh, you even got this guy. Who's this guy? Um, the guy who was dating Kim Kardashian. Oh my God! What is it? Pete Davidson. Yes. You know, so you get all these guys, and you also got Jay Courtney there. You're thinking, okay, he wasn't the first one, so clearly yeah. he's, he's clearly going to be in the film. Yes. Exactly. Only well, find out, dude, within the first minute, five minutes, they're gone, dog. Even, uh, you're like, ah, uh, no, this is crazy. They gave it the Star Wars treatment, where basically in the star in the third Star Wars movie, where they basically did undid everything Ryan Johnson did. Suicide Squad 2 undid everything <laughs> Suicide Squad 1 did. Remember these guys? Yeah, let's pretend they weren't here. <laughs> and the ones that are there that we liked, we're just going to make them a little more uh, fun. Yes. And then we're still gonna kill a lot of them anyway. Yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna give him we're gonna give we're gonna give the captain, yeah, or the leader an epic death. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, 
And then, of course, don't forget about Brad Pitt in um, Death, Deadpool 2. Deadpool. Right. Yeah. But those are movies, though. They're not really TV series. But at the same time, no, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. I think there's a big difference. And uh, it's, But anyway, going back to what I wanted to say is, when you look at some of these people's filmographies or whatever they've done on television, yeah. it's, it's really hard for you to actually realize that they were in certain projects that you're already familiar with. Like you find that someone was in Grey's Anatomy, but because you didn't know them at the time, yeah. you wouldn't even have noticed that they were there unless that storyline resonated with you so much that you really actually were interested in the actress and you wanted to know more, much about them or the actor, uh, yeah. which is unlikely that it will happen often. It's happened. Like, for example, again, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, actually. I think it's Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Yeah, I think it's the girl. I can't remember her name. I think it's the one who plays the cheerleader in um, Heroes. I just know it's a blonde white girl, but I think it's her. Mm-hmm. Um, they, She was in Law and Order, right? But she was so good. They brought her back as a different character, like, years later. Wow. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I think it's Hayden Penetere, Hayden Penetere or something like that. I, I think, think that's the name. Right, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was her in that one, but I think it was 60% sure it was her. But I get what you mean. So Some of them are so iconic that, I mean, we have had issues, not really issues, we have had moments where a character would come and they, they were supposed to come for like one episode or two episodes, but they're so popular, like Power Rangers, for instance. D- Jason David Frank, who plays Tommy in Power Rangers, the Green Ranger. Yes. He was only supposed to be there for a few episodes, but that, that, that character and the storyline was so iconic that they eventually even made him like one of the main characters, dog. Absolutely. <laughs> Another yeah. one, Ron from Game of Thrones. He's a short-term character. He's not supposed to be there the whole series. He was not supposed to make it to the whole series. I don't oh, think Ron. he dies in the books, but he definitely disappears in the books. So he's not that important really? in the books. Yes. Ron. Ron. He's not that important. He's just a cell sword. That's all he has. Um, then he ends up a lord at the end of it. But <laughs> so much. <laughs> They were like, nah, you can't get rid of him. I like, had no nah. idea. Yeah. I had no idea. I honestly had no idea. I thought he was one of the main characters, like in the show. Yeah. He was just a character. He helped Tyrion. Wow. And then obviously when things fall apart, maybe season four. I think he was supposed to be gone already by then. But then they yes. like, dude, you're great. So, yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, you could say the top four main characters is Tyrion, Daenerys, Jon Snow, and Arya maybe. Yeah. And if you think about it, if you even if you think about Tyrion, if you if you understand what happens in the books with him, right? You can understand mm-hmm. why after season four they kind of change his character. They yeah. Change it because he was supposed to go through this whole. He was supposed to go through a super villain arc. You know what I mean? He was to come oh. back. But people didn't like him. People didn't like. Uh, people didn't like that idea. I think so. They decided to just keep him a good guy, even though he doesn't do anything from then onwards. Yeah. So they just kept him as a. Because what happens in the books, according to people I've heard read, is um, what happens in the books is after he kills um, the fake girlfriend, because basically the whole girlfriend situation is mm-hmm. a lot worse than you think. In the books, it's a lot worse. Um, mm-hmm. So he goes through this. After he kills his father and he kills this person that he thought he loved, he basically becomes brutal. He becomes cruel. And yeah, and he goes through this whole thing. He doesn't just become a drunk. He becomes a bad guy, basically. That's what I've read anyway. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, popular fan appeal can do a lot. It's probably like that. Yeah, it can, like, the fans become so sensitive to what might happen to their favorite characters that the creator sometimes has no choice but to give them what they want. Yeah, hey, man, look at Sonic. Can anyone even be mad at that one? Sonic. Yeah, remember his, remember his face before they changed, before the fans? Oh, yeah. yeah, look, I'm glad that the studio actually listened. Listened because that Sonic was horrendous. Though. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> that Sonic, that Sonic was like an actor who was not supposed to get the job but got yeah. it anyway. You know what I mean? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So they did. A, I mean, it's probably one of the most lucrative uh, brands at the moment. Eh? Absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure if you if you if you've seen the Knuckles trailer. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a spin-off uh, series now, a limited series with Knuckles. It's called Knuckles, I think. Starring Idris Elba. Yeah. Idris Elba is still Knuckles. Yeah, yeah. Hot damn. Okay. Yeah, man. And good for them. <laughs> They're clearly making money from this. As they should. I mean, Sonic is a cool franchise. Better yeah. than the games. 
<laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Look, I don't want to lie. Sonic for me, um, as a kid, I enjoyed the TV series, the animated yeah. TV. Yeah. There were two animated series that came out at the same time. One was a bit goofy, and then one was a bit more dark and serious. Yeah. I'm talking about the serious and dark one. Mm. Uh, shout out to Jalil White, who played Steve Urkel in Family Matters, because he's the one that voiced Sonic in both those TV animated series. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. I don't want to lie. It was really amazing. So, Jaleel, yeah, I need to watch the films. I don't watch the films, but I need to check them out. Jaleel White is a rock star, in my opinion. I like that guy so much. Like, I feel like no one really understands how cool he is. You know what I mean? Like, the work. Dude, that, yeah, that guy, for me, his level of acting when he was a child yeah. was on par with veterans. Though. Absolutely. 100%. Why and I mean, also voiced a chicken in uh, Quest for Camelot. <laughs> Remember Quest for Camelot? <laughs> I think so yeah, long time ago, bringing back old memories, man. And I think there's a Steve. I think there's gonna be a Steve Urkel series, animated series, if I'm not mistaken. I'm stand to be corrected on that one. But I think I read an article or something. If that's true, I'll be blown away. Yeah, hey, dude. No, he was supposed to, like he should he should actually be a billionaire by now. I don't know what's happening. Like the residuals were supposed to like pay I assume, him. I'm assuming that one of those situations happened, like the like the whole Cat Williams type situation. Maybe he wanted to he didn't want to don't want to you know offer his booty hole or something, and now <laughs> now his career is over. I don't know, dude, because that man he disappeared. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. he just... now he's just like he's just doing like supporting roles and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But look, even if he doesn't have mi- billions, I'm sure he's a millionaire. Oh, because sure. he seems like he's content with where he's at. Yeah. Like, it's like, ah, look, I already made all the money that I need. It's all good. I can do the supporting roles now. <laughs> it's fine. I even saw an interview once with him, and I think it was Talib Kweli. Um, he was mm. talking about oh, the, uh, the People's Party, yes. There's a podcast by Talib Kweli called The People's Party, yes. Exactly. And they were talking about how the industry was like. Where in family matters, like they have like um, they just have nothing but like white writers, and yes. black characters saying things like "oy vey," like they're Jewish or something. It's like okay, but no, a, a black person would never say these things. So you know what I so, mean? Like, "Oy vey," it's like a Jewish expression. It's like a oh, Jewish version. Yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. I get. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and it's like okay, but why would that ever happen to? Why would a black person ever say that? You yes. Know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I know, like, the industry was like that, and hey, man, I'm sure that's probably what kept him out of things, man. You know what I mean? Mm, that's true. Guys, you know we do tangents normally, so please don't be alarmed. <laughs> and, and it's going to be worse today because a lot of these actors, I think this one's the most, Greta Lee's the most famous actor, and the yeah, rest, so. I looked up their, act, their roles, dog. I don't know any of these roles. That they're doing. <laughs> Nothing. I think so. I would say the second main character here is uh, played by Tae Yu. Yes. I hope I'm not butchering the name. Uh, but this man is actually a German South Korean actor. Um, he's fluent in German and he's fluent in English. Uh, but the way he he made that Korean accent thing in this film was impeccable. Like That's I actually awesome. bought. I actually believe that this man doesn't know how to speak English properly and is still learning. Truly remarkable. Um, but yeah, he was in a, a musical film called Leto, which was released in 2018. Uh, um, he was in um, a film called Equals. Um, he was in Black Money. You're right. I don't know any of this. Any of the stuff, Doc. Uh, he, he was in a TV show called uh, Vagabond. Um, he was in another one called Chocolate, um, and he was in Money Game. But it seems like these are Korean yeah. uh, shows. So oh, I guess yeah. maybe that's why we are not... Yeah. Pardon? Bring all these faces, and I'm like, um, yeah, there's nothing I can like really latch on to here from a Western perspective. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and then uh, the third main character, or the protagonist, is John... You know, if oh Magaro, Magaro, yeah, um, he is an American actor. He acted yeah. in films such as Not Fade Away. He was yes. in The Big Short, which is fantastic. Yes, he was in Carol. Um, he was in First Cow, Showing Up. Um, he was also in the um, 
Orange is the New Black, and he was in the Umbrella Academy. Um, I know the Umbrella Academy, but I don't remember him being in it. Yeah, I was going to say, who, as who? Was he, was he not maybe one of the, the members of the other academy? I don't think so. I'm trying to, because I love that show. I'm trying to think, who was he at? Yeah, me too, man. I have no idea, hey? Yeah, I also have no idea. Um... I don't see it here on his Peabody. Leonard Peabody. Leonard Peabody. Homography. Uh, Leonard Peabody. I'm trying to think. Um, I'm going to spend the whole. Um, I'm determined now. I want to say it's a small role, but it can't. I'm trying to think. Leonard Peabody, that name sounds familiar. Oh, oh wait. Wasn't it like the villain in the first season? You remember there was someone who was... Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. That's him. You remember there was someone manipulating Vanya and she fell in love with him and all of that. Yes, you're right. He's He's the bad guy in in the first season, yes. Yeah. Yeah, who would have thought? I mean, he looks nothing like that guy. (laughs) This was a big... This is a visual change, definitely. He looks different. But anyway, yeah, those are the three main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's as much, as far as we can go, I guess, with this cast because yeah. everybody else, we honestly don't know them. <laughs> Some of them don't even have pictures on the IMDb page, dude. Yeah, yeah. But I think some of them are probably famous in their respective countries, yeah. their respective yeah. local um, yeah. areas and whatever. It's just that from an international point of view, yeah, Africans and so particularly Africa. South Africans, and but South Africans who barely watch any Korean content, it's yes. hard for us to actually pinpoint uh, yes. these people. I'm sure there are other people who would have said, guys, you don't know this and that? Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't, but we're still learning. Which is, which is um, funny, actually, because so, yeah. I think that's changing. Because I think a lot yes. of these Korean soapies, these yes. Korean soapies are starting to kick Bolton and Beautiful's ass, and they're starting to show up. Like, people who have Netflix are, like, watching these Korean soapies now, because, like, you know what I mean? They're like, and South Africans love soapies. We I was dating someone who who watched a lot of Korean telenovelas on YouTube. Yeah. Because so it's yeah. It's, it's the right spot for us for some reason. Mm, definitely, definitely. I think it's one thing I've realized about Asian stories mm-hmm. is some of them are really complex. They're not typical predictable stories. It's stuff. Yeah, oh, I don't know how to put it, but but I think with Asians, and now you can correct me if I'm wrong, they know how to write multiple characters. Well, yes, I think that's true. I think with them, with them, it's it's high concept. Ah, they are high concept writers because nice. I'm a hardcore manga reader. I have read hundreds of manga, Same uh, including from from Chinese to Korean to um, mm. Japanese. Okay, so just just to give people cons. Um, context so there's manfra so manfra is basically manga based in france manfra fra manga is um japanese comics and then uh there's manhua um which is i think it's korean or chinese because there's manhua and manhua manhua is korean manhua is korean and then manhua is chinese i think yes yeah, just to give people context, yeah. Definitely, I would say um, Asian high concept, like their ideas of like Bleach and Death Note and all these ideas of theirs. Um, definitely, I would say they're above the average when it comes to stuff like that, right? Yeah. I would say the part where the West takes over is when, with the execution, I think, and the story, overall story. For example, I've noticed when I read a lot of manga, like for example... Um, Let's see, what can I think of a good example? Like, um, think of a pattern like Bleach, Naruto, um, um, Exo, Exorcist, Black Clover, mm-hmm. like that. Basically, those are all one exact type of shonen manga, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, where there's exact fundamentals there. Right. But the storylines are, are unique in their own way, right? I get you. But there's like this hero who has to learn the power system and then there's like a tournament arc. 
Yeah. And then there's like a villain that they have to defeat. And then the next villain is a bit stronger than the previous one. Exactly. Right. Once you get, I call it the, especially when it comes to manga, I, I call it the 50 chapter rule. Once mm. you, well, the first 50 chapters of any manga are normally some of the best writing that's out there. 100%. But then once you get from chapter 50 onwards, you start to notice that's when the patterns start coming in. Ah, uh, right. Like, like I love romance, right? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That kind of stuff. And normally they'll be like, oh, um, chick wakes up as a villainess type stuff. You know what I mean? Like reincarnation type stuff. Mm -hmm. that, that, that little unique plot arc that makes it unique from other ones. Mm -hmm. Start and it'll be awesome. But then the arc will end. And now we're following the pattern of other ones. Mm. Western stuff doesn't do that. You know well, what I'm sometimes it does, but I do get what you're saying. Not to the same extent. Let me put like that. Let me put like that. We're not talking about exceptions. We're talking about patterns. If you know what yeah, I mean. Okay. I'll give an example. CW shows are... Oh, so yeah, but they start like that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> they start the same and then they don't exactly. change. Whereas yes. the other one starts so unique that it's incredible. Oh, Hallmark. You know, CW Hallmark, oh, yes. same. Exactly. Yeah. But um, if we're talking about just manga in general, like, oh, dog. Which is ironic because some of the best stuff of theirs is some of the stuff that moves the slowest. If you know what I mean? Mm, that's true. Like, for instance, with Naruto, Naruto takes longer yeah. than most manga because it's world built on, an, on another level, you know. Uh, I think it's, One Piece is the same. So you really get to know the village. I, I remember when I was basically telling some, a few friends of mine to watch Naruto. I told them, I said, by the time Naruto ends, you'll probably know almost everybody in the village of, of Konoha. <laughs> True enough. Like important people. You know, there's a the guy who sells ramen and noodles. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know the Especially rookie line. Especially the anime. Especially the anime with all their filler. Oh my <laughs> god. You literally meet everyone in the anime. In the manga, they cut some of that shit out. But in the anime, yeah, it's all there. They had, they had an entire like two episode arc once about them delivering mail or some nonsense, something like that. I can't, <laughs> I can't even remember. I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, at a point, Naruto, and I think that's why a lot of people clocked out, and there's even a lot of articles online about filler arcs that you should not, you should avoid when watching Naruto, especially part one, especially in the latter part of part one, because it's the, Naruto just starts going on these missions that just, they're nothing, it's just like a whole lot of nothing burgers. Literally 70 episodes after Sasuke versus Naruto. Yes. Where... In the in the manga, it goes straight to to it, it um, ends there, yes. Yeah, it ends there, straight to shipping. Yes. Seven. What is it like? Seventy episodes. <laughs> Seventy episodes of the anime were like, nah, dude, we're just gonna put you there. And it's Emissions. like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, because at a point it starts feeling like slice of life. Yes, it becomes slice of life for seventy episodes, multiple seasons. Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you crazy? But you see, that's the problem with guys. I know we're tangenting a lot, but we just we're just giving content. That's a, the problem with uh, manga versus anime schedules. So what happens sometimes is yes. you find that the anime, which is so weird, because Shonen Jump mm -hmm. releases content every week. Every week, but, but for some reason, some reason it's so slow that the it's anime is than like the anime. How? All I'm saying is, I think slavery is back in, in Japan, dog. Is what oh, that makes no. sense? The animators, whoosh, whoosh, work faster. Because no. how, how can the anime be faster than a weekly yes. publication? Yes, how does it make sense? And then they'll both have like 600 episodes. And it's like, what, 600 chapters, 600 episodes. How? How? <laughs> how? Uh, no, I don't get it, dog. I genuinely don't get it. Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, don't even get me started on that one. Oh, dude, because the original Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa, um, it's it's great, it's brilliant, it's one of the best manga ever written. But then the, the first anime before Brotherhood, the original anime that came out, um, after a certain point, I think like you could say the midpoint of the yeah. original anime that was following the manga, yeah. it goes left. They because it caught up, and then the, the artist said, be like, look, man, I'm just guessing. Yeah. Let's just guess. Let's guess what happens. Who is with me? Guessing? Guessing? Who wants to guess? It's yeah. like, Jesus. Look, it's yeah. not bad. It's still good. 
Um, but you can see that something there's a bit of a like a decline somewhere. Yeah, it's very. For me, I, I I consider her to be like the. And I hope nobody comes after me. It's just an observation. So please, she's like a a manga version of J.K. Rowling. You know, in a sense, in a sense, because the way she came up with this kid who uses magical powers and creates this whole story about it and compelling characters and side characters. Oh, my goodness. It is amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And she she was born in a farm. She grew up in a farm. That's why her follow up series was called Silver Spoon about about farming. <laughs> nice. OK, well. Yeah. No, nah, dude, sometimes you hit gold, man. Sometimes you just hit gold. So I think that was just a masterpiece of Definitely. 100%, man. Anyway, yeah, yeah. man. Do you wanna, I don't know if you want to say anything else before we get into it. But um, we're explaining yeah. the difference between Asian and uh, Western yeah. storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think we, we, we lie, South Africans. In, ish, but we also have similar stuff, especially when it comes to soap eh? No, nah, yeah. I think it's... How many high concept ideas do we actually have as a, in terms of South African storytelling? The high school dramas, the, I mean, don't get me wrong, we have some, some pretty cool slice, oh, not slice of life. The thing Coming is, Africans page. love realism, if you know what I mean. Ah, yes, like your Izo Izo. Yes, we love right. that stuff. Right. We love it and a half, which is why, like, if you think about it, a lot of South African sci fi and fantasy has come out recently. Um, well, in the last five years, but I couldn't name three. If you put a gun to my head, I couldn't name three. Yeah, you know same, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I remember Netflix did a show, some show about a guy who, like, who, like, couldn't feel pain or whatever, but then it was, like, oh. a police procedure or something like that, and it's like, oh, okay. And it's, like, a private detective, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then there was another one with a, with a tree, and I never watched it myself. A tree? I can't remember. Something like a magic tree or something like that. I forgot. I'm sure if I watch a trailer again, I'll know what I'm talking about. But otherwise... Okay. It's all, it's all it's all like local it's all it's all stuff that isn't magical because you know, I've listened to people talk about like fantasy and stuff like that and just the disdain that can come out of a person's face sometimes <laughs> you start to lose hope as a writer you're like oof <laughs> oof it's not taking Popeye and you're like Jesus I think, Jesus. I think that's it. why yeah. I think that's why South Africans gravitate towards Korean stuff now um, because Korean stuff has, okay, obviously there is some fantasy and so, like, oh, Asians love doing a lot of different genres. Like anime alone has probably over like 50 genres. I mean, yeah. the school life, you know, we mentioned slice of life, uh, but anyway. Um, but we also love Indian stuff, which is crazy. And a lot of Indian but stuff even Indian crazy. stuff is a bit... It's a bit bonkers crazy. though. Some of it is a bit bonkers. Yes, yes, it's a parody of itself. I'm not talking about the overacting, oh, but okay. the premise of the story in itself, the plot in itself, most of it is relatable stuff. Like, you know, um, it's stuff that people watch on Moja Love. The, yeah. the mother-in-law hates the, the daughter, yeah. and the husband is oblivious, or he's not away. He's away on an overseas trip, work thing. Yes. Now... The woman is struggling and yeah so it's like oh i can relate to this and i think that's what south africans love consuming so but definitely like if i show up with stargate my stargate dvds i don't think anyone i'm not like, gonna get that much attention yeah but, it'll be like you're a nerd like <laughs> is it telling them about captain america they're like yeah no yeah. yo dog i've had family switch off in front of me just just like mentally switch off as i show them a tv show that it was not like amazing like lord of the rings like that and just poof, and it's like <sighs> But isn't, it weird, isn't it weird how people can live in the same house but have a different taste? Like, how does this happen? Because we all watch the same TV. Yeah. When did the split happen? I don't know, dude. I think it's a. I think this. I think a lot of it has to do with stigma, though. Like, I think a lot of it has to do with stigma. Okay. Like, if that makes a lot of sense. Like, I think it's a stigma thing. So, like, we obviously we're nerds. We don't care about stigma. Right. So we we the the tide goes this way, and then we're like. No thanks. We love yes. our sweet stuff. <laughs> yes. So now the question is, how do we bring the tide back? Because um, because I would love to bring the tide along with us. Because if you think about it, the only nerdy stuff in the nineties was Big Bang Theory, right? In the nineties. Well, no, let's say uh, two thousand. Sorry, two thousand. Early two thousands. Yes. 
And then after Big Bang Theory, basically came Iron Man and Iron Man and X Men. Let's say X Men and Iron Man combined. Yes. Yeah, and yes. those two, actually, you know, Blade, X Men, Iron Man. They did the heavy lifting and they just dragged an entire. And Spider Man. And Spider Man, yes. Yeah. They just dragged an entire. Yeah. Remember, Spider Man actually got in a, um, broke the record for the most opening on an opening day. Yes. Uh, in 2002, I think. Yes. It's like 72 million, I think, or 70 something. Can't remember. But, but it was, it was the, one of the biggest movies ever, of all time, actually. Exactly. So, so Tony Maguire been... must have made a lot of money around that. Oh, that dude, he must have. Yeah, I'm sure he was looking at Leo like, ha-ha, what yes. now, buddy? <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Because, and the funny thing, Tarantino talks about this, where he talks about um, storytelling where um, during the Great Depression, where people were lining up for, for bread, do you know what I mean, like starving mm-hmm. to death in America, 1920s. He was talking about how there'd be queues outside movie theaters. Because even though you were starving to death, you still needed something. Do you know what I mean? Like an escape. Yeah, something more. Mm. So, um, and it makes me think about those movies. Maybe people like us need to find the right combination lock of like really dragging our fellows, like dragging everyone along. You know what I mean? Mm. You you know, you're right. Because I remember even in the 70s, I remember when I was doing research over the years, uh, when a movie like Star Wars came in, the cues, bro. Yeah. And it's also like, yeah. There was no streaming at the time and all yeah. of that. So you had to travel probably from like far, bro, to go to maybe, I don't know, like somewhere really, really far to, to be able to watch uh, the latest Star Wars film. Exactly. But the post office records at the time were probably like a, a big deal. Oh, yeah. It was no joke at that time, but it makes you think. Yeah. Makes you think about us as artists. We need to somehow find that movie. Like for example, I know there was a TV series that actually did. There was fantasy that actually drew people's attention. It was The Calling. I forgot what the name was in Vernac, but um, mm. it was when I was Indeed. in high school. Yes, yes. Mm. It was when I was still in high school. It was about witch doctors or whatever, right? Horror. Right. right. That blew everyone's mind, and then there was never a second season. There was just never a second mm. season. Mm-hmm. Everyone like lost their minds. Do you remember it this? It makes me wonder why why shows like that get cancelled. I mean, even Queen Sono. Um, for me, it was brilliant. It's one of the most. For me, it was one of the most intriguing uh, South African projects to actually be on Netflix. It was really good. Yeah. Like it was really really good. Really really good. Uh, ended ended in a cliffhanger, and the show got cancelled. Yeah. 